to the channel there will be likely a market crash coming up in next few months or few days i have kept all the cash position at this moment i have several data points i want to refer through in this video and we'll see how, why why have i made that decision before going there um, let's go back and hear to what some of the experts has to say and after, especially after the powell's call on september 20th I personally think there's a chance it falls short. I've been cautious in the market for a number of weeks, remain very cautious on it, I've had trimmed exposure. Here's the issue. I do believe we go into recession. I don't believe there'll be a soft landing. Market holding in, great. And, and people like me love to come out, talk about the, the study of how spreads and corporate spreads are doing well, and it's not indicative of any kind of real slowdown. But somebody better tell a CFO who's now raising money uh, and high yield at eight and three quarters that it's it's okay because the spreads are narrow when it's up from three and three quarters at the, at the end of 21. And how are you sleeping? It's a big job you have. And, I, and I'll tell you why, why I'm asking that. We have a lot of people on that almost describe the risks as completely symmetrical. In other words, they say that a stop and start Fed policy that lets inflation stay alive is the worst thing that we could do. Since early last year, the FOMC has significantly tightened the stance of monetary policy. We've raised our policy interest rate by five and a quarter percentage points and have continued to reduce our securities holdings at a brisk pace. The full effects of our tightening have yet to be felt. The main theme of those uh, experts was basically the baseline case where there will be a soft landing is no more achievable. And some people doesn't like to be getting onto the soft landing and, you know, basically Powell saying that the effects of the interest rate is not yet to felt. So that, that brings to our, uh, the first point on the overvalued market. The overvalued, I feel that market is overvalued at the moment, especially if I look at the average credit card usage, it has gone to the highest for the last 10 years. It's gone to average price of 300 and 3911 on an average American. So what it means is that regardless of how the interest rates are affecting, it is not really impacting the pockets of the everyday American. If people are just using the saving accounts and using the credit card, the credit card balance is going up. And you know, when Powell says that the FX is not yet felt, it, this is what exactly it means. Nobody is under pressure at this moment. If people start defaulting the credit card, that is a start point of the crash. Now, if you think about the companies, viewpoint as well there's two components in companies parent sheet we have the uh, the long-term liabilities and they have the short-term liabilities anything more than one year short-term liabilities is less than one year companies like you know you've taken the loan maybe 20 where the interest rates are so low and we are not in the pressure to pay that off but uh, you know just like we're buying a home in 2023 where the interest rates are high now companies are rich in the cash position because as i said before it is an overvalued market based on their balance sheet they can just pay off their short-term debts on the from the cash position to the but for the long term for the future projects they haven't had uh, get it, got, gotten into that place and there will be a point where people will be defaulting credit cards you know the companies will be defaulting their long-term debts as well and that point uh, you'll have a real problem coming up well that is a whole reason of you know these interest rates versus the the inflation and all the stuff there's a delayed effect on what the economy would react. This is a little graph of the consumer price index versus the SPY 500 companies. There is a delayed effect on the CPI versus the, the market. The Powell doesn't speak about the market conditions, but everything is interlinked. When you have money to spend, you know, you're going to use a credit card, buy your phones, go to restaurants, and you basically make this, you know, the companies rich in the balance sheet and the companies increase their labor, uh, labor rates because, you know, they have their own you know, way of cutting the taxes or they have their own way of expanding the businesses. So it's all going in circles, but you know, it all Im implies on how the market is, on. market is high economy, going faster, people are rich in cash. People spending is high. On this graph, you have the CPI plot versus the market as 500 companies. You can see that it has a delayed relationship, like having that delayed effect, right? So on the, the orange line is what in 2008 and 9, the CPI fell down after the market crashed from almost uh, um, the market here was uh, SPY was around uh, $154 and in 2009, it fell to $82. So it almost lost 50% of 50% of its value. But you know the the inflation all has the delayed effect. Coming to present scenario here, now this the proportion is gone. If you look at the CPI, CPI is sitting at uh, a 3.84 percentage, but the SPI is not coming down at the same proportion as the CPI. If based on whatever we've seen on this graph, it has a direct relationship and it has to come down at some point. And that is why you know this is one of my data point where I see that you know CPI, if CPI is going to come down, market has to come down too.
so you know if if powell has to take off the pedal of the gas he needs to see that cpi has to come down so if the cpi can only come down the market comes down in other words the next data point i want to talk is about the federal fund rate here you know i'm going to zoom here it has this delayed effect right so delayed effect in 2008 and 2009 just we saw a graph plot between the the consumer price index and the uh, the spy 500 now the orange is still the uh, the market spy 500 and the blue line this time is the the federal funds too so the federal rate has has uh, come down and then the market has come down as a delayed effect here too this is probably not a you know, direct relationship or it's an indirect relationship whenever there's flat curve obviously the market goes up because you have you know almost you know zero interest rate or very less interest rate but you know 5.33 federal interest rate uh, did happen in 2008 where you saw that market has come down from 153 dollars spy has come down from 153 dollars to 84 dollars so that is that emphasis on my point again you know the market is dependent on the you know, on the, the inflation as well if the inflation has to come down unless the inflation comes down you know the interest interest rate will be will be staying up as well so it's all interrelated the the third point i want to talk about is the 10 year uh, 10 year pressure, treasury normally the bonds and yields are inversely relation uh, with the market you know, when the, whenever there is high market in the, the bond market come down basically the movement of cash from one one source to another source would happen um, people move the money if the market is riskier and you know that's how it works here in 2020 when the covid happened you have seen that the increase in the bond and and then you know then there is like a reduction in the the bonds because it has this 20, 2020 21 effect the market went up like you know exponentially and the bonds fell down in that period uh, the bond is sitting at 4.44 percentage now for last probably if you look at from may to now right so market fell down um, and bond market has gone up at this point now the bond market again from this point uh, around may it's going up still but the market did not fell down you know till date that never happened the market is always inversely proportional to the bond market now that again proves my you know my fourth point here saying that you know market is overvalued it's not basically respecting whatever data points it needs to go through it is an inevitable case where the market is going to drop respecting whatever the data data points which we referred so far and there is another external factors raising oil prices the us has sold a lot of its national strategic oil reserve to stave off the rising prices of the oil so we did use a lot of oil reserves during the last two years of to to basically shave off the um, the oil prices and that is why you know it went up to 5.5 per gallon now it is around 3.8 and we went because it, we have used all our reserves now now we are really dependent on the uh, on one of our rigs in the gulf there is a uh, currently an active hurricane season which is going now, if that hits one of the rigs out there, you now that's going to directly impact the oil prices, and it's going to just zoom up, you know. And again, that can happen, right? I mean, it's a risk factor. Those of you who are new to the market, you know, crude oil is a relationship with the with the market. You know, whenever there is rising crude oil, the market will come down, and you know, vice versa. Uh, the crude oil per barrel is trading around eighty-four dollars. Once you know, once that scenario due to hurricane, because we are not having any more reserves, right? So we just use all the reserves, and now we are in hurricane. If the crude oil does increases, you know, that will tremendously affect the market and hopefully that shouldn't happen, but it's going to have and it's going to make it more worse, you know, apart from the economic factors here. Next one is the housing market. We have seen a slowdown in the housing market in the later half of the year due to the high interest rates. Housing market is always a good indicator of how the market will go through in you know, the housing market, the interest rate and all that stuff. But as the ho more houses come into the market, the economic activity come down, you know, the inventory will increase. It has an indirect relation of people not paying mortgages and all. it's just giving you that indication that, you know, when I uh, started this video, we talked about, you know, pe people using their credit cards. It's getting to a point like it's coming to uh, savings accounts it's, it's now kind of getting to a point where you know defaults are starting to happen and inventory in the housing market is getting increased so it's also directing to my point like a market is is to crash from this point there is another point here where you know i've read this article china is a bigger buyer of everything globally when it, the economy is firing um, on all cylinders the u.s benefits as it as it can sell more products to china the problem is china is trying to money now we all know what happens if you know, by this time we were familiar with what happened after covid you know u.s government started printing money and it had an impact on inflation it has an impact on the demand side of the 
uh, of the um, economy if if you have everybody has money you know people will go buy and you know what not and then you will have it will make the worst situation if you're trying to reduce inflation printing the money is just like in you know, the worst thing that could happen based on whatever points i've talked about i'm just seeing the markets going south for sure uh, again this is not investment advice or anything and it's, it's it's up to you to buy or sell but it's really for education purposes and and if you're, if you're maybe if you're lucky market can go up from here on too but for me personally i've taken all the positions in the market Thank thank you so much for watching please do subscribe and like my videos we have ne newly created channel specially focused on sh uh, on highly shorted stocks and we also give give a special uh, research on on topics like the current market and all we'll see you in the next video